Monday. Today at lunch, Albert Sandy told us that his parents had gone away for the week and left him home alone. I wasn't really sure if this was true since Albert is known for spreading lies like this. However, he then said that since he was free from parental control, he was going to throw a huge party at his place tonight, and this caught all the guys' attention. None of the girls seemed interested in this idea. I'm pretty sure it was because the party was being held on a school night and we had a lot of homework assigned, so I guess Albert's party is going to be more of a stag night. One thing's for sure, I'm not going. I didn't even think of asking mom because I knew she wouldn't allow me to go, so I guess I'll just have to hear about it tomorrow. Tuesday. Well, looks like I won't be hearing about that stag night today, because none of the guys who seemed so hyped about it yesterday were at school today. Actually, scratch that. Guess who I saw at a lunch today? Albert Sandy. I tried to ask Albert about the party, but he seemed more interested in telling some other guys who hadn't gone that Elvis Presley had been discovered on the moon or something. I don't know what he's been reading, but I do have a feeling that something's fishy with him. After school, I told Riley about Albert's party and how I thought he might be linked to those guys' disappearance. Fortunately, he decided to help me investigate Albert. Our investigation of Albert basically involved following him home so that we could know where he lived and what he did after school. Eventually, Albert went to a house that I think was his. He disappeared for a few minutes before reappearing in the living room with a bag of chips and a bottle of root beer. He then flopped down on the sofa and turned on a DVD. I thought he was watching a horror movie, but it turned out to be something weirder. I won't say exactly what Albert was watching, just in case mom ends up finding my journal, but I will say that I didn't know Albert was a yogurt fetishist, or that yogurt fetishists were even a thing. Anyways, Albert watched this video for I don't know how long, and every bit of it as unsettling as it sounds. To make matters worse, Albert opened the living room window, so me and Rowley ended up hearing everything that he heard. I don't know how long we spent sitting there, but all Albert did was continue to watch those type of videos. Eventually, Rowley said that he had to go to his house because his mom was making him dinner, so we bailed out. If Albert is really behind those boys' disappearance, then he sure hides that ability well. Wednesday. Those boys didn't show up today either, so I told Riley that we should continue keeping an eye on Albert, as well as anyone else who could possibly be involved in a kidnapping. This included pretty well all the troublemakers, as well as Fregley. Speaking of Fregley, I asked him what he spent the last two nights doing, and he said he'd just been stabbing a kite with a stick. I guess that has kind of ruled him out as the kidnapper. Then, Rowley arrived and told me that Albert was holding another party, and this time he was inviting girls. At first, I wasn't sure how he managed that, since girls don't seem overly fond of him. Then, I noticed Albert parading Bryce Anderson around the cafeteria, mainly because he attracts girls the same way light attracts moths. I'm not sure why Bryce accepted Albert's invitation, but I swear I later saw Albert reluctantly handing Bryce a wad of cash. Regardless, the fact that Albert was having two parties in the same week got me curious. Then I had an idea. Why not attend this party and find out what Albert was actually up to? Riley wasn't that keen on my plan, but I eventually convinced him. This afternoon, I told mom that me and Riley were doing a science project. Fortunately, she believed me, which meant that I was able to go to Albert's party. After meeting up with Riley, I headed to Albert's, not knowing what to expect. As it turns out, Albert's party was completely out of control. I guess they didn't care what the other kids did to his house because they were pretty well destroying the place. Strangely enough, I couldn't find Albert anywhere. I thought he'd be taking the center stage since he organized the party, but he was nowhere to be seen. Then, Riley suddenly spotted something. I thought he found Albert, but he was actually pointing at something else. It took me a moment to realize it, but Riley was pointing out Holly Hills. Yes, the girl I gave up almost a year ago because she thought I was fraggly. I don't know why Riley thought I still had a crush on her despite me not mentioning her for over a year. Then, it dawned on me. Holly's the most popular girl in my class, so she probably gets a lot more gossip than I do. And she probably knows at least a little more than I do. I mean, if I don't ask her for this information, I'll have to ask Bryce. And Bryce is the biggest prick who have ever lived, so I'd rather avoid him. Eventually, Holly stopped dancing and went to get some punch. It was at this point that I decided to go and talk to her. Or rather, I shoveled towards her. This was the most awkward I felt all day. I'd already talked to Fregley. Good thing Fregley wasn't here to ruin everything. Though, I will admit, the first thing I said to Holly wasn't exactly what I would have wanted it to be. It only got more awkward from there. Though, I won't blame Holly for the next thing she said. You look so different without your glasses, Fregley. Actually, I'm Greg Hefley, the Dancing Mom video's drummer's brother, if you will. I don't even know why I mentioned that last thing, but it somehow changed the entire conversation. Now we were suddenly talking about how her older siblings were also in the same grade and all the pranks they pulled on us. I never thought I'd say this, but it was going great. Well, at least it was until Dennis Dennard arrived. I thought that Dennis wanted revenge on me for not buying an old science project off of him, for helping him land in summer school, and for getting him held back for the third year in a row. But it turns out, he wanted something else. Actually, never mind what I just wrote. Dennis must have thought that Holly and I were dating. He was going to fulfill his revenge by stealing her from me. Having already given up on Holly once, I certainly was going to lose her to some future car thief slash drug dealer. So without thinking, I grabbed a cupcake. I didn't hit his face like I intended, but it was enough to make Dennis try and hit me back. Fortunately, his aim wasn't very good. However, things got worse when the kid Dennis hit wiped the smashed cupcake off his face. 
As soon as he said this, all the boys began hurling whatever food they could find at each other. I bailed out at this point along with the girls in Rally, so I wouldn't say I discovered any evidence to use against Albert, but I did clarify everything with Holly and I told her all about Albert's recent activity, so I guess that counts as a benefit. Thursday. I have no idea how the school's gonna stay open at this rate, because none of the boys involved in the food fight show up for school today. I guess that they might have been hung over, but the boys who went to Albert's first party haven't shown up either. Once again, Albert showed up. Though, since the guys who usually sits with are missing, he sat with Dennis Dennard, Eric Glick, and various other sketchy people. Then, I remembered that Dennis had been to the party yesterday. If all those guys who stayed for the food fight were missing, and Dennis wasn't, then surely he was working with Albert. I have no idea what they're doing, but judging by the people Albert's working with, it's bound to be something illegal. If I'm gonna find out what Albert's plan is, I'll need some way to track his every movement. But since I don't have any classes with him, I'll need either Holly or Rally to do this for me. Well, it turns out Holly has math with Albert, so I can ask her what Albert does in class. After all, he must be doing something interesting. At the end of the day, I asked Holly about Albert's activity during math class. Turns out, he's just as intent on looking at inappropriate stuff at school, as he is at home. At one point, Albert pulled out a Playboy and read it for the rest of the class. Somehow, he didn't get in trouble for it, despite making no effort to conceal it and inadvertently showing Holly all the pictures. After learning what Albert does in class, I was wondering just when or if he was really behind those boys' disappearances. I mean, he can't look at porn and kidnap people at the same time. Or does he just want everyone to think that he spends all his time looking at scantily clad women? Speaking of which, what does he do at night? This time, we decided to go to Albert's house later and see what he spent his evenings doing. When we got there, Albert was still watching the same kind of stuff he watched on Tuesday. At one point, he got up and returned a few minutes later. However, when he came back, I thought he looked a little odd. It took me a moment to realize that what we were looking at was, in fact, Eric Glick disguised as Albert. Presumably, Albert didn't want anyone suspecting him, so he got Eric to act as a stand-in. Sure enough, I then saw Albert sneaking through the backyard before getting into a van driven by Dennis. With Albert and Dennis gone, we weren't sure what to do until I came up with a plan to sneak into the house. All we needed to do to get in was to distract Eric, which I decided to do by breaking a window. After a few tries, I was able to break one of the upstairs window, which caused Eric to run outside so he could assess the damage. While he was busy doing that, we were able to sneak into the house. With Eric out of the way, we started looking through Albert's house, yet for some reason all we could find was porn. At one point, Riley found a bunch of DVDs with some cryptic message written on them. Unfortunately, it just turned out to be more porn. Good to know Albert learned something from the Facts of Life unit. Holly, on the other hand, wasn't interested in Albert's DVD collection. In fact, she says she found something much more interesting in the kitchen. Buy new locks for basement door in case of HQ breach. Shopping list. Yogurt. Sleeping pills. National Enquirer. Rowdy Riot. To do. See if any girls are having parties on Friday. I'm not sure what these notes are supposed to refer to, assuming they even have anything to do with Albert's plan. I mean, the only one that strikes me, one mentioning HQ. Who knows what Albert's hiding in his basement. As for the others, I'm not sure if they're even related to this plan. Come to think of it, it'd be a lot easier to do this if Eric wasn't constantly staring at us through the window, presumably hoping that we'd let him in. Just as we started to search Albert's room, Dennis's van pulled into the driveway, so we ran for it. Just before we left, I stole a pile of books I found on Albert's desk, hoping that they were notebooks. When I got home, I decided to go through the books I'd taken. Sadly, they weren't notebooks, but rather a lot of girls' books. I have no idea why Albert even owns these, especially since he's an only child. Anyways, I looked in the books to see if there's anything scribbled in them, but it was just page after page of mind-numbing nonsense. And it didn't get better when I discovered that I grabbed something else, too. Never in a million years would I have thought that I'd ever need to use the Sweet Secrets Diary Key I bought last year ever again, or that Albert kept a diary. Though, the latter was probably due to the main character in those stupid books he seems overly fond of doing the same. Anyways, I was expecting Albert's diary to be full of blow-by-blow -blow descriptions of porn he'd watch. Surprisingly enough, I was wrong. Thursday. Gotta find a place I had all these pornos before my parents get home. I mean, these fine <laughs> be quite nice, but I can't let the rents discover I'm watching this or I'll take away my computer and I'll never be able to watch porn again. Well, partially wrong. The entry was one of the cringiest things I've ever read, but the rest of the diary contained some valuable information on Albert's activity. It was all thanks to the diary that I was able to discover Albert's next move. Screw the kid who caused that food fight, and Greg Hefley, especially him. Why couldn't he just give Holly to Dennis? I thought he didn't like her anymore, and because of that, I gotta find another way to get the girls into my basement. With my special yogurt, of course. Well, this sure revealed a lot. Whatever it is that Albert's doing involved the entire student body, and from what I understand, takes place in his basement. The diary also helped explain what the shopping list had to do with Albert's plan, because it seemed that he plans on giving them a yogurt laced with something. Given what was on the shopping list, it's either Rowdy Riot or Sleeping Pills. Still, the diary didn't explain what Albert's plan was, so I think I'll have to do some more digging. 
Friday. I was half expecting Albert to go around offering frozen yogurt to everyone, but for some reason, he didn't. Though, I swear I saw him behind the school offering some to Alex Aruda. Alex didn't show up for class for the rest of the day, which made me wonder if Albert used him to see if his yogurt really worked. In other news, I heard from Holly that Bethany Breen's holding a huge party inviting all the girls. I noticed that Albert didn't mention anything about a party, so I wonder if he's got anything to do with it. I had my doubts until I started talking to Eric. I'm not sure why Bethany would talk to Eric, but I'm pretty sure he mentioned something about providing catering with some help from a really friendly frozen yogurt place. I told Riley and Holly about this, and Holly said she'll go and investigate. Though, I'm also curious about this, so I decided that me and Riley would go too. The only problem is, it's an all-girls party, and me and Riley would look pretty suspicious if we showed up there. So, we needed disguises. Good thing the drama club left a bunch of wigs lying around. After school, we went over to Rally's and raided his mom's closet for clothes. At one point, I decided to challenge Rally to a game of rock, paper, scissors where the loser would be forced to wear a skirt. I was certain I was going to win, but somehow, Rally didn't roll paper like he always does. Seriously though, how do girls cope with that constant breezy feeling around their unmentionables? Rally says his... Rowley says his neighbor Leland dresses in drag several times a year, and I think there's something seriously wrong with that guy. Come to think of it, we could have just stolen some fake mustaches and pretended to help Albert transport the yogurt to Bethany's. I mean, it'd save me the embarrassment of being seen in a skirt. Eventually, we met up with Holly. With that sorted out, we went and joined the party. It's a good thing that Holly didn't tell the other girls who we really were, because if she did, then I would have missed out on a ton of juicy gossip. I mean, how else would I have learned that Trevor Wilson was caught watching Japanese cartoon porn on one of the school computers? Or that Jamar Law is trying to turn his talent of getting his head stuck in things into a comedy act? Now I'm starting to wonder if I should do this more often. I mean, the only thing close to gossip that I get from the guys is whatever crap Albert finds in the murkiest corners of the internet. Speaking of Albert, I told the other girls about his peculiar entertainment choices. Then, Holly told the girls about how Albert reads Playboys in class, and from then on, the gossip session became an Albert roasting session, where me, Riley, and Holly revealed everything we knew about Albert. From his porn collection to his inexplicable obsession with girls' books, we told everything. And that was the most fun I'd ever had at a party. Seriously though, I really need to do this again. I'll admit, I got a little carried away with the gossip. Actually, I was so engrossed in it that I completely forgot about the yogurt until it arrived. Soon, two troublemakers arrived at the giant freezer for the yogurt. As soon as the goons set the freezer down, some of the girls grabbed spoons and started scooping up the yogurt. It was at this point that I knew how to inform them that the yogurt was laced. I first thought of telling them, but then I saw Ruby Bird in the corner of the room. Don't ask me who invited Ruby, since no one, apart from Fregly, likes her. But then, an idea popped into my head. I grabbed a scoop of yogurt, then approached Ruby as carefully as possible. I mean, who knows if she still bites people. At least I had something I'd like her to bite. Sure enough, she did just that. I knew my plan had worked, because right after that, Ruby started to stumble around as if she was in a trance. And then, she fell over. I looked around the room and noticed panicked looks on a lot of the girls' faces. At this point, I calmly told them that Albert had mixed ground-up sleeping pills into the yogurt. This was followed by all the girls, well, except for Ruby, dumping the yogurt back into the freezer. And I have to say, the awful breezy feeling was well worth raining in Albert's parade. And the gossip. Though, mostly the gossip. Saturday. It seems that whatever secret Albert's hiding, it's probably in his basement. So we ended up going back to his house to find out what it was. The only reason I knocked was because I was still tired from last night. And it's not like it was even necessary because the door was unlocked. I guess Albert and his goons must have had a party of their own, because the whole place was a mess. If Albert's notes were anything to go by, then he put a lock on the basement door after we searched his house on Thursday, so I suggested that we look for a key. After a few minutes, we found it on the kitchen table, alongside half a dozen empty tubs of yogurt. I guess the goons must have eaten some of the yogurt they were supposed to serve at Bethany's party, because all of them were fast asleep. Still, this was nowhere near as exciting as what we found in the basement. I have no idea what to expect from Albert's basement. Given his entertainment choices, I thought he'd actually have some kind of sex dungeon down there, Actually, that was only half of it. If there's two things I don't understand why boys my age like, they're definitely food fights and wrestling. Don't ask me how, but somehow Albert managed to combine the two into a game of football, but with a tub of yogurt as the ball. And for whatever reason, he got one of the troublemakers to film it, presumably so he can watch it over and over again to satisfy his yogurt fetish. To make matters worse, the boys were completely brainwashed. At this point, I thought of calling the cops on Albert since he was guilty of abducting pretty well every guy in school. But just as I was about to do so, Albert himself arrived. I had no idea what to do until I noticed a table full of yogurt tubs. I thought Albert was going to try to hit me back, but the other guys noticed him first. And shortly after that, Albert was completely covered in the other boys, who I can only presume are trying to lick all the yogurt off of him. Thanks to that, me, Rally, and Holly managed to escape Albert's house so that we could call the cops. Soon enough, they arrived. They ended up taking away Albert, Eric, Dennis, and several other troublemakers to interrogate them. So it looks like we outsmarted Albert. I just wonder what the police is going to make out of Albert's yogurt porn videos though. 
Sunday. Looks like Albert's become famous because I saw his face on the front page of the newspaper this morning. House raided. U.S. taken into police custody. Albert Sandy, 14. Eric Lake, 15. And Dennis Dennard, 17. Are among several U.S. taken into police custody following their raid of an alleged child pornography studio. Sandy's reported... Speaking of which, I spent a great deal today testifying to the police about everything I saw Albert do. I also learned that Albert planned on making yogurt-themed porn films, specifically so he could sell it and make more money to buy more porn. Though, after he failed to kidnap any girls, he turned into a gay yogurt orgy movie. A thing. Yeah, I don't understand that. What I do understand is that while Albert and his goons won't be going to jail, there will be consequences for when they return to school. Though, I'll have to wait until tomorrow to see what happens to them. Monday. When I got back to school, everything seemed back to normal. Though, in some cases, I like school better the way it was last week. I don't think that starring Albert's money-making scheme did these guys any favors. And until they settled down, I think I'm going to start eating with the girls. At least I won't be seeing the worst kids in school for a while, since a lot of them played a role in Albert's scheme. Most of them got suspended for at least a week, while Dennis and Eric got two weeks suspension each. I'm pretty sure all of them got one-way ticket to summer school, too. As for Albert, he somehow escaped... But... As for Albert, he somehow escaped getting put into a juvenile detention facility and still got suspended for a month, so it looks like I won't be hearing his ridiculous claims for a while. The only thing I can add is that now Yogurt has become such a joke at the school that every time he gets mentioned, it'll be followed by an Albert joke. I forgot to mention earlier, but this whole adventure put me off Yogurt for life. Thanks a lot, Albert.